Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning worship experience. We are so glad that you've joined us today. And we'd love for you to maybe take a moment and share this on all of your social media platforms. We want to get the good news of Jesus out to those that we can. As we get ready to go into worship this morning, make sure you've got your Bible, gather your family around, grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and prepare the atmosphere right there where you are. Whether you're at home, at work, possibly right even in your car, wherever you are, He inhabits the praise of His people. So today, as we get ready to go in and worship and experience the fullness of the Lord, let's go in with expectant hearts knowing that we are going to shine bright in 2022. Jesus. I'm ready. Come on, church. Let's praise God today. Woo, he's alive. He's alive. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on. Here we go. Risen. He's risen. Forever glorified.
power, same power, same power lives in me. God is great. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you know down on the inside, Gary. Woo, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, woo, somebody know about that up there. I heard you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That he's great today. He's mighty today. Woo, come on, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. And bless our God today. He's great. darkness you give hope yes, you restore every heart that is broken great are you Lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. To you only. Yeah, yeah. You give life. You give life. You are love. You are love. You bring light to the darkness you give hope you give hope you restore you restore every heart that is broken great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour so we pour Pour out our praise to you only. 
to you only. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Oh, oh, oh. All the 
Holy. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey guys, we're so glad that you're with us. I know you enjoyed that worship, and I know it's uh, really prepared the atmosphere of your home, yeah. prepared your heart. You know, we enter in to his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts of praise. I, I say this on the regular as we're, you know, doing this part of our service as we come right out of worship, but, but honestly, it's upon us. It's conditionary. That it's something that the Lord says, hey, it's there, enter in. That's right. And then we have to put ourselves in position to really just let the atmosphere of the Lord just fill our home, fill our hearts, right? That's right. And really put us in a place where we can hear the voice of the Lord. So God is so good today. We're so glad you're with us. Hey, I've got it right here. We'll talk more about it, but the future is bright. Uh, but we also want to look back. It's important that we look back so we can also just really begin to have vision for the future. But God has been so good to us and bring us through these last couple of years. And, and more specifically, 2021 allowed us to get back to, I hate using the word normal, but at least back to some things that, that were really a part of uh, the heartbeat of hope and life. And that's making sure that we're giving back in our community, that we're yeah. helping to meet the needs. Uh, I've often said it, you know, being the hands and feet of Jesus. And, and so here's just a couple of things you can see that took place as we just look at this recap of 2021. great to see what's taken place at Hope and Life over the past year, 2021. And church, we just want to say thank you for everything that you've done to make that possible because we couldn't do half the things that we were able to do this past year without your support and your contributions as well. And so we love you. We thank you. We appreciate everything that you've done to get us through 2021 and to be able to bless those that we were able to bless and minister to through that season. That's right. So many great opportunities, and we were able to seize the opportunity. Our carpe diem seized the moment. There you go. You know, as we all together collectively really stepped in, and God began to do some great things. So meals given where they were needed, um, back to school book bags. Yeah, uh, so I mean, many just things. So many things. Gifts at Christmas, just so much. But uh, And we're believing that 2022 is bright, meaning there's many more opportunities right. uh, to really, really make a difference. Yeah. Uh, but here's what's going on right now here at Hope and Life in this first month of, 20, of 2022, January 2022. We have our new bracelets, of course. Mm -hmm. And so when you show up in person, you'll be able to get a bracelet. Uh, we have, didn't have those over the last little bit just because of everything going on. It just complicated things. But right. uh, part of... What we're doing this year is just making sure to put that stamp of approval on the new year and declaring that the future is bright. Amen. Psalm 65 and 11, just in a moment, I'll talk about it, how that in the beginning of the year, God just pours and lavishes his goodness and his abundance upon the crown or the beginning of the year. We're believing that. That's and what's right. in the beginning is in the rest of this year, 
doesn't mean there's not going to be much out in our future. Yeah. If there's mountains, there's going to be valleys. Right. But our Lord is faithful. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we got our new bracelets. That's what's going on. And right now as well, we're fasting. Right. Our prayer, fasting, and giving revival is underway. We are one week, I That's guess, right. at one this week. moment. Mm -hmm. We are one week fully into our prayer and fasting time together this first 21 days of the year. And we are so excited about what God is going to do through this in each one of us individually as well as corporately. And there's nothing greater, I don't think. I think it's probably of all the events and everything we do every year, prayer and fasting for me is probably the highlight of my year. I know it starts yeah. in January and you would think something should be my highlight at the culmination point, but really it's in January where we start our year off. And as you just said, babe, about, you know, the, whatever's in the, the seed is in the tree, That's whatever's right. in the seed is in the fruit. And so we know that as we start this year, this being the seed, the beginning, the very first part of the year, as we start this year um, with our first fruits and, our, and all the things that we're doing That's with right. our prayer and fasting, we believe, we know without a doubt, because we've seen it so many times before, that God is going to continue to be faithful to us. And we're going to see many uh, things take place in our lives as a result of our obedience to Him. That's right. So at, at what began on last Sunday, now we're one week in. We're every day fasting and praying. Some are yeah. very, very diligent and really fasting in a way that uh, it's easily felt. Yeah. Uh, others, maybe there's other things that are maybe not food oriented, even though food is the quickest way to feel <laughs> a fast. Yeah. Uh, but other ways, maybe that you're, you're fasting certain things that you would normally have as a part of your life. Not bad things, you know, but yet things that are good to push away so we can keep our eyes on the Lord. And then we're praying daily as we wake in the morning yeah. and as, you know, the Bible talks about from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Right. I guess I'm just saying it's good to wake up and say, Father, we thank you, pray. And then as we end our day, pray. So prayer and fasting is an everyday aspect of what we're doing. That's exactly During right. During this fast all the way to the 30th. And then on the 30th, there'll be a special day at the culmination. We're going to be taking communion on the 30th. It should mm -hmm. be our first meal, spiritual meal, if you will, as we finish this fast. No matter what you fasted, we'll take communion in that morning service in person. We'll also do it online for those that are with us on Facebook and YouTube. And then we're going to strategically give. You know, the right. Bible talks about it in the gospel. It talks about when we pray, we should operate a certain way, not as mm -hmm. hypocrites, but pray unto the Lord. When we fast, shouldn't pray in a Fast in a way that's, you know, a hypocritical way, but some authentic. But then also when, when we, we give. give. Right. Jesus was preaching and said those three things, pray, fast, and give. They're very, very important. That's right. And when we do those things, the word says that a three-folded cord is not easily broken. Yeah. Really what it does, it just makes us, um, you know, ready for the year as we pray, we fast, and then we give. And the Lord just honors that. Yes, he, he honors does. us just going after him in all of these things three ways yes, and does. then we then then you hit it with that communion meal it just is basically the icing on top of the cake we're just saying lord okay we're positioned yes. for you to go before us guide us direct us we humble ourselves and we need you lord to heal our land and father as well when you pray when you fast and when you're giving and you have that heart in the beginning of the year it sets you up to really be more repentant and also to extend grace to others. And, and really, I said it the other day, and, and I saw it somewhere, it was powerful, but it talked about that repentance is the language of revival. Mm -hmm. And I really believe yeah. that it's the language of revival that prepares us for the greater things that God's going to do Amen. in 2022. So pray, fast, and give. Press on in, push in. If you're just now hearing about it, there's Daniel Fast. There's a lot of ways. You can go on our website as well. There should be information in a moment. That'll give you, you know, some uh, understanding of how to fast if you yeah. haven't. But hey, there's now with what we have on our phones, just Google <laughs> how can I fast and you'll get a ton of information right. and just apply it. And then at the end of the month, the 30th, we'll be ready to give and uh, take communion. Also, let me just say as well, is we've got Super Bowl Sunday coming up. We're talking about it now because it's a significant part of what we do. And when I say significant, it's just a day that we take it as a thematic day. Now look, I'm wearing my Georgia Bulldog uh, just gear right here. They are now <laughs> national championships. 41 years from the last time they won. That's a long Took a time. Minute. Took we a were minute. mere children yes. back when they yes. did what they did. Vince Dooley, Buck Ballou, yeah. and Herschel Walker. Walker yeah. But uh, hey, so we're repping that. I'm repping that today. But um, also Super Bowl Sunday is just an awesome time and a fun time at the church. You know, I'm a big super, we're big football fans. Yeah. So prepare for that. That's coming up. That's right around the corner. And so uh, we're excited about those good things that are going to be taking place, right? Amen. Yeah, it'll be a fun time. And maybe if you're not able to join us there in the theater, uh, you can gear up at home. Wear your jerseys yeah. and maybe even, uh, you know, take a picture and 
highlight it. What is it? Hashtag it. Super Bowl Sunday, Hope and Life, or That's Hope and right. Life Super Bowl Sunday, and put it out there on social media so we can see you at home with we'll your see. jerseys on. We'll see. We'll see how it all how yeah. it all works. Well, yeah. it's time to give to the Lord, and so we want to just take the uh, opportunity to, to challenge you or to remind you or just to encourage you. Mm-hmm. You know, there's three ways, because many have just to encourage you to keep doing the right thing. You know, to others to challenge you to maybe trust the Lord in this area of giving. Mm-hmm. Uh, because when it comes down to it, I mean, it is a step of faith. And yeah. that's one of the only areas in the world with the word where it says, where Jesus, or should I say God says through his word, try, try me in this. Me. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. check it out and see if I will not pour out upon you a blessing that yeah. you're not able to measure. But this is one of those areas the Lord requires us to put a little bit in, a little skin in the game, but just to trust him and then watch him just lavish yeah. his blessings upon us. And so I challenge you to do that. We just encourage you to do these very things, just to yeah. give to God because you can't outgive Him. That's He'll true. always be faithful to respond. And I tell you, the times that we're in with much of what's going on, uh, it'd be easy to look at the bottom line and say there's more month than there is money. There's more uh, things that require your attention. And, and that's not to say that's not that's not obvious or that's not a good thought. That that's a genuine thought. Yeah. But I just encourage you, trust God, keep Him first. You know, the Bible talks about it how that Isaac, in a fast, a time, or sure, I'm sorry, not a fast, but in a time of famine. Amen. In a time of famine, he was thinking of doing certain things, and he just asked God what to do, and the Lord said, stay where you are, sow into the land where you are, and watch and see if I won't bless you. And the Bible said he stayed where he was. He sowed into that, that season, which was a season of famine, mm-hmm. but he gained a hundredfold blessing. Yeah. So fasting, praying, and giving opens us up to hear God so we know exactly what to do. And God's always going to be encouraging us to be faithful, to give, to sow, to trust, and then watch just the Lord do what only He can do. Because honestly, the blessing comes about, and God wants to bless you and I in a way where that we know it's not something that we've caused, right? Or that something that we even deserve sometimes, right, right. but that He's the giver, right? Yeah, Amen. And you know, when we're obedient and when we walk in the precepts and what the Lord says, it's amazing how you will see those things. Just um, the windows of heaven will be opened That's up right. upon you. And you know what? It'll come in times and seasons when maybe you weren't expecting it. Maybe you were least expecting it. Sometimes you think it's going to come when it's like, oh, I need this, I need this, Mm -hmm. and the Lord will supply. But then there's going to be other seasons in your life where not just that moment where he supplies when the need is so great, but there's going to be other times that he's going to say, I just want to bless my child for how faithful they've been. I think about it in relationship to our own children. You know, I remember our kids when they were in school and they'd get an A on a report card or they would get a good grade on a test or something that they worked hard on. And I remember as parents, you know, we wanted to reward them for what they had done and we were so proud of them for the achievement that they had made and that they had really, they had been obedient to do what they were supposed to do, right? They had really studied and they had worked hard to do what they were supposed to do. And as parents, it was easy to say, you know, here's a little something or, yeah. you know, or take them to the store or when they're little, you know, buy them an ice cream, whatever it might be. In the same way, if that's what we want to do, as the Bible talks mm-hmm. about, if that's how much we want to do for our children, our earthly children, think of how much more our Heavenly Father wants to do for us. That's so right. again, we encourage you today that as you give, give with a, a faithful heart and obedient heart and just an expectant heart for what God has for you. So we're encouraging you, we're challenging you, and just for many of you, we're just, just reminding you, you know, just reminding yeah. you that this is an opportunity to see the Lord bless you. So yeah. let's speak our words of life. The Bible says, we declare a thing, it shall be established. Mm-hmm. Not just giving. You'll see the information there on the screen of how to give, online text give, or mm-hmm. sending an offering through, uh, of course, the P.O. Box. But let's speak life over this action. Amen. Come Amen. on, say this with us, if you would, there at home. Upon, Upon the, authority the authority of your, of your word, word, I have, I have given, given and it shall be given, given to me. me. Pressed down, down, shaken together, together and running over. over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved. And walking, and walking with God, God. Perfect, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine, divine favor and blessing. blessing. I am I'm blessed going in and, and I'm blessed going, going out. And, and all, all that I do will, will prosper in Jesus' name. name. Everything we've just declared right there is right out of God's word. Yeah. You see the scriptural reference for it. And so now's the time, once we've declared it, now just don't say something and not have action that follows. Yeah. We've declared it, now give. And watch God just open the windows of heaven. Amen. We're going to go right into the Word. We want to remind you first, just through this little video, as you see, what we're declaring over this year. The future is bright.
All right, the future is bright. That's what we're talking about today. Can you say that with me? Say, the future is bright. Come on, can you say it? Say it like you mean it. Amen. Come on, the future is bright. I'm going to count to three. When I get to three, say it with me. One, two, three, the future. Now, I hope today that that is something that's more than just you being encouraged to say, uh, more than just you attempting to believe, but that you're able to really grab a hold of that by faith. The Bible says that we've all been given a measure of faith uh, as a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed in the kingdom, but if it's watered and if it's uh, taken care of, it can grow into one of the largest shrubs or trees, you know, in the garden. Faith is something that can grow, and I'm challenging you today to have faith to believe that The future is bright, that there are many things that are set against you. There's many things that are set against our society and the world today, but the word of God is not silent about the time and the day and the season that we're in. The word of God is very clear related to the last days, but still you and I being a light in the midst of a darkened world, all I know is, is that light shines brightest when things are most dark. When things are their darkest, the smallest of light can still lead us on the way out. The smallest flame can be bright and can give enough light where someone can see to take the next step. I challenge you today to believe, to grab a hold of it by faith that the future is bright. And if you believe that, can you say amen today? You know, the word of God says here in Psalm 65 and verse 11, I want to read this to you, something out of the Old Testament and something out of the New to really crown, if you will, the beginning of our year. Psalm 65 and verse 11 in the New King James Version says, you crown the year with your goodness and your plans or your paths drip with abundance. See, God's plans, God's purpose God's beginning of this year is crowned with his goodness. It's not something that's based on how you feel or or what things look like. Because we're people of faith. And folks of faith don't live by what they see. But we live by what we know that our God is good and he is faithful. Amen. So I declare it over your year. And even as you leave out today, if you're willing to bump fist or just kind of wave and going out, I'm blessing you and saying that this year, as the word said in Psalm 65 and 11, is crowned. Your year is crowned with goodness. And that there will be abundance and harvest in this year for you because the future is bright. Come on, can I get an amen? The Bible says also in the New Testament, John chapter 16 and verse 33. I love what Jesus says here. It's him speaking, and he says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, now I love that he doesn't somehow disconnect from what's going on in his world. So even as we read this, we somehow read this or rehearse this or remind ourselves of this, somehow not reflecting on the world. He says, now listen, the world, your world and my world, the world that we are in, that is full of tribulation. There's a lot of broken things in the world, but he says what? But turn on this phrase, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Who today knows that the Old Testament as well as the New Testament still declares that God is good, Jesus has overcome the enemy, that we don't have to wait to see if we win, but we have already won through Jesus Christ. Come on, if you believe that, give our God praise, amen. See, the future is bright today, and so I challenge you, if you would, push, press. You and I are not those that are just in some 40-yard dash. To really run with the Lord and run for the Lord for the might and the glory of the Lord, it is not a quick dash. It is a a long-distance and enduring run. You have to make sure that you're a long distance runner. And I know with long distance runners that they talk about a point in the midst of their journey, no matter how long it might be, if it's a marathon or something much smaller in distance, there's still a point where they're pushed to the end of their limits. And they hit what they call the wall. And when they hit that wall where it feels as if every bit of energy that they have is failing, that everything in them says quit. Now, I've reached that age. I don't know, Alan, if you have, but I know Alan's getting ready to have a birthday here pretty soon. Amen. We love him. Happy birthday to Alan. Amen. But I know I've hit that age where, uh, you know, I used to, when I was a young man, I used to like to get up and go out and run and jog. You know, I used to kind of love to do those things. I still like to work out from time to time or at least get dressed like I'm going to work out. Come on. Amen. 
You ever do that literally get dressed up to go work out and then find something on TV or look at something, all of a sudden you're sitting there eating a bag of Doritos an hour later saying, well, I at least was going to try. Come on, amen. Am I, am I the only one? I know I'm not the only one. But, but I'm at that age where now when I even think about going out to do that, and I'm not old, I'm still young, but yet my, my, na- my, my brain starts to, con- to, 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 to kind of begin to debate with me. I'm getting ready to maybe do a, a mile run there in my neighborhood, and when I come out of the front door, down through the driveway, getting ready to make my work out there on the road, my brain says, you got a car. What are you doing? You don't have to run. You can drive. But see, it defeats the purpose because I know I'm out there to exercise. But yet, every one of us in our spiritual journey, every one of us is called to be warriors for the Lord. And where some might work out or some might not, some might have a gym membership, some might not. In the natural, it doesn't really matter. In the supernatural, we're all called to be warriors. Come on, can I get an amen if you know that? Sons and daughters of God. Soldiers in the army of the Lord, amen. And so we're required to be long distance runners that we might run with might and energy for the Lord. And just as in the natural, there will be a wall that will be hit. Can I tell you, spiritually, there will also be moments. That's why it's so important at the beginning of the year that we make something clear. We declare it. We become uh, uh, decorative in the aspect of saying the future is bright. Now, we don't just say it just to say it, to somehow try to convince ourselves that, that it's okay. I'm not here trying to sell you a bill of goods. I'm not here to try to be some snake oil salesman just trying to say, hey, get a bracelet and head out into your world. The future is bright and we cross our fingers and our toes. The devil is a liar today. You and I don't have to lean on luck. We have God. We're blessed. Amen. That we know that one of the names of our God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He not only began this thing, but how you know he knows how to wrap this thing up. Amen. Revelation speaks about the the finishing aspect of our God, that God not only knows how to start it off right, where he said, let there be light, and then also created individuals from the dust and put his breath inside of them. And after so many days, he looked and said, it is good. And now here we are moving to the end of time. I believe the season lets us know, you know the seasons of our world can give us signs that we're in the last of days. But the Bible says not only that he's the one that began a good thing, but he's the one that knows how to finish things right. Amen. And the word tells us that he will restore and eventually the lion will lay down with the lamb. But our God is a God that knows how to handle his business. If you believe that, can somebody say amen? Somebody, come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord we got to be people that are running for the glory of the Lord, that we know that we're called to be a part of that race. And in running that race, there's going to be times that we're going to hit the wall, times when we're going to feel our strength spent. Spiritually, I'm speaking, where we're going to be in a situation where we're not going to have enough, and that's where God shows up and makes the way where there is no way. But you and I have to be willing to push. That's why it's not just something we declare in the beginning of the year, but we also back it up what with Scripture. That the word says that he will crown your year with goodness and your paths with abundance. Who receives that today in Jesus' name? That the world is full of tribulation. Hey, that's what the word said then and it seems still relevant today. But don't be afraid. Be of good cheer for Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. That is a jab and a right hook from the word of God to allow you to leave this building here in a moment or even watching there at home or even in our overflow to leave here know with full heart and faith filled up that the future is bright because God began the alpha and he knows how to end the omega. He is a good and he is a faithful God. So our future is bright. Come on, somebody. Give our God praise if you believe that today. Amen. Let me just tell you, I, I like what a translation, it's the easy read translation, and it takes that verse, John 16 and 33, and it says the end of it like this, you'll have trouble, but be brave. I've destroyed the power of this world. So here's the, the real marching orders today for you and I to run that race, even when we hit the wall, not if, but when we hit the wall. But you know, in the natural, the runners will say that if they're running any long distance and they feel their strength kind of fall and fail away, that if they keep pushing and keep taking the next step, no matter how weak it is, stumbling that it might be, that if they keep pushing, that there will be in the natural, 
We're using the natural as a metaphor for the spiritual. In the natural, there'll be what's called, you've heard it before, haven't you, Wada? A second wind. That there'll be a, a gaining of strength. Even some runners will call it a runner's high, where there's such a, a weakness. And then all of a sudden, where they were so weakened, there'll be a second wind, and there'll be a burst of strength, and they're able to finish. If that's something that we have, can experience in the natural, even that more so, we can see those things accomplished in the spirit. Jesus says, here, hey, here's the marching orders today. Here's our running orders. Here, here, take the baton and run today, believing that the future is bright because, hey, we've got to be brave. We've got to be those that believe what we say and say what we mean. We've got to be individuals like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that we love God. You know that they were with Daniel in the beginning. The Bible tells us in the book of Daniel that Daniel and his three friends fasted before the Lord. That they wouldn't eat the other things that others would. And, and even the soldier or the one that was set over them in charge said, no, you got to be healthy because you got to produce. And if you don't produce, then the king's going to be upset with me. They were now hostage in a foreign land. If you know the story of Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But they fasted. And as they fasted, he said, Daniel said this. He said, just watch and see. Let us honor God the way we know and the way we need to. And watch and see if we're not only strong, but able to produce even to a greater level than what you would think. As they set themselves apart, they fasted. The Bible says what? That they were strong, that they were vibrant, and that every other that was with them could not even produce what Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could produce because they knew their source was their God. Not the natural, but God was their source. The natural was what? Blessed by the super of God on their natural to make a supernatural breakthrough where they were highly favored of God. Well, what does that come down to? That comes down to even though, though they are in the world, they are struggling, they got stuff they're going through. They gotta be brave. There is tribulation, but yet they believed that their God had overcome their world. The Bible tells us that in the midst of where they were, that they were able to be an example for the glory of the Lord. They were able to live out a life that said what? The future is bright. Not because of my now, but because of who God is. Not because of what I'm in, but because how God can deliver me and make a way where there is no way. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. See, you and I are fasting and praying because we're believing. Listen, here's the marching orders. Here's the way to run with the baton. We've got to be brave. Why? Because the world is full of trouble. Come on, how many, anybody know that? How many know the world's full of trouble? Oh, yeah, man, the world's full, 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 full of trouble. All you got to do is turn on the news, and what are you going to hear? The headlines are going to say earthquakes and tsunamis and tornadoes. And I'm not making light of it. This is stuff that's happening around the world, and our phones only that much more in real time connect us with things moment after moment. If you have your notifications turned on, you're going to be notified from things close and a million miles away of what's falling apart and breaking loose, and our eyes are trained on it. Not that we should not be informed. Because as believers, we need to be informed. To be believers doesn't mean that somehow we turn our brain off, no. We turn it on, but yet even in the midst of having our brain on, we look to our God and say, God, even though we don't know what tomorrow holds, we know you hold tomorrow. Even though we can't somehow see you, we still trust your heart. God, this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, somebody. And then our faith with our brain and who we are, we're able to run for the glory of the Lord, hit the wall and feel weakened, but then continue to push. And I heard a man of God say, push is nothing but pray until something happens. Amen. Amen. Push and fast and give and trust God and watch God give you that second win. Watch God give you that glorious runner spiritual high for his glory where you know what you're doing is not by might nor by power but by the spirit of our God. Amen. I love how Paul said, you know what? I'm not here to convince you with my words. I'm not here to somehow awe you with my ability. It is by the power of God and the anointing of the Lord that what I speak changes lives. Not because I can do it but only God can do it. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell you today that the future is bright. God is good. If he did it for Daniel and his buddies, he can do it for you and I. He was living in a time of trouble and tribulation, but God promoted them and used them for his glory. Oh, and if you believe that, come on, give God praise. Come on, somebody, magnify the Lord. But if you know the story, how many know the story? How many know your Bible story that it's something that not only did God honor them in the initial of their fast, but how many know there was a furnace in their future and there was a lion's den in their future? 
But let me get back to what this translation says. This other translation of John chapter 16 and verse 33 says, you will have trouble, but be brave. Look at somebody say, be brave. brave. Come on, look at three or four folks say, say, be brave, be brave. It's a song we sang years ago. Be brave, be bold, for the Lord that God is with thee. Be brave, be bold, for the Lord your God is with you. Trouble's out there. This fasting and preparation is preparing you for the rest of your year. The future is bright, but that doesn't mean there won't be fiery furnaces. But all I know is when you go through hell, you come out on fire for the Lord. Come on, somebody. Amen. I just believe that you can be put into a lion's den, but come out being a testimony of look what only God can accomplish. Amen. Some of you have been praying for your family. Well, don't be afraid of the lion's den because they'll see your faith really works. And when you come out on the other side, you say, if it had not been the Lord on my side, where would I be? They could have sat in church with you for two years straight and not had anything happen in their life, but they see you go to hell and back and watch God be faithful with you. You can come out and say, you know what, whatever song we're singing, whatever sermon we're preaching, all of that meant power and authority. But when you saw it lived out, when you saw me walking it and not just talking it, but living it out, it is the source of my strength. I believe sons and daughters are coming home. I believe households are turning around with salvation. I believe some pray, prayers you've been praying are about ready to be answered. There might be some trouble between here and there, but God is a God that not only will give you Goliath, but he will also overwhelm the enemy. Come on, somebody. Hey, praise God. Who believes in your 2022 that the future is bright? Softly playing, if you would, Alan. But that doesn't mean, don't, don't, don't walk out of here all, you know, cloud, head in the clouds and, you know, pie in the sky. I think healthy, balanced, pastoral work and, and people being prepared for the day they're in is to realize, be brave because the world's upside down. Be brave because a lot of things aren't going to make sense. Be brave and fast like Daniel and his friends did when they were taken hostage and in a foreign land, but they still saw that God's hand was still in charge even though they didn't know what tomorrow held. And be brave knowing that in all of our lives, maybe even collectively as a body, as a nation, there might be some dens of lions. There might be some fiery furnaces. But I don't know about you, I, I just, I, it resonates in me that at Joshua 24 and 15, I don't know what y'all are gonna believe, but as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. Oh, I don't know how you're going to react, but we've already got a made up mind. A lot of y'all are running to things that don't matter. A lot of y'all are pulled away by worries and anxiety and concern. But as for me and my house, the future is bright. We're going to serve the Lord. I'll talk more about it next week. But the reason why I know the future is bright is because one thing mainly is that this life is a veil of, to the supernatural life. Let me give you just a couple of points. The next is best, or the best is next. First point, just, just quickly. The best is next. There's going to be a next to all of our lives. Either, either we're going to die and receive our reward, or we're going to be caught up and receive our reward with those who've died first in faith. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. I think you have it there for me. Here's what the word says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. It goes on to talk about in the twinkling of an eye, those that are alive, this natural will be turned or changed into supernatural. Those that are dead in Christ will be caught up and will be gathered together in the heavenlies with our Lord. You know, I'm going to talk a whole lot more about the practical, temporal, day-by-day -day stuff over the next couple of weeks about how to not just wear a bracelet but embody this and know that this just reminds you that your future, hope and life's future, the body of Christ's future is bright. Come on, can I get an amen? But I got to start off with what sets it all apart right from jump. That however life ends for you and me, if it is by the way of the grave or if it is by the way of being caught up and raptured to be with our God, that the future is bright because our eternity is secure in Christ Jesus. That if you confess Jesus with your mouth and you believe in your heart, then I can I tell you there's already a home with your name on it and it is called heaven. That doesn't mean that you got to be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. But also I don't want you to be so earthly minded that you forgot about heaven's good. 
Amen. I want you to know that however things end, God's got a future and a plan and it is a home to be with him. The next is always best because the next gets us one step closer to no longer being here on earth, but being right there beside our God. Come on, somebody. Can somebody give God praise? Look at somebody say, say, heaven's your home. Tell somebody, heaven's your home. Oh, I know I got on my Georgia gear today. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of important things happening for Georgia, but Georgia is not my home. My father was born in Rome, Georgia, but Rome, Georgia is not his home. I was born in Cleveland, Tennessee, but Cleveland, Tennessee is not my home. It's where I was born, and, and that from there I've lived here, but here is not my home. The Bible says that we are sojourners, that we are pilgrims, that we are aliens set here on earth to be an ambassador for a kingdom we have not yet seen, and to a king we will one day see. But we are living our faith out, trusting that there is a next in your and my life, and the best is next, and sooner or later it will be heaven, it will be glory, but until that time, we're going to be warriors for the Lord. Come on, somebody. Somebody give him praise. I love how there was that encounter where Jesus walked among them, and he went right to, right to, right to um, Thomas. Thomas, you know, was known. The scripture never said that we called him Thomas the doubter. It said that he obviously doubted. It gives us example of when he said, you know, I'm not going to believe unless I put my finger in the nail prints in the, Christ, the hands of Christ Jesus. I'm not going to believe unless I put my hand in that side I saw split open on the cross. He wasn't with them earlier when Jesus raised from the dead, walked in among the other disciples. He wasn't with them. They said, Thomas, you're not going to believe what we just saw. He said, you're right. I don't believe it. And I'm not going to believe it until these eyes see it. And the Bible says they were once again gathered and Jesus walked into the midst of where they were and went right to Thomas. Aren't you glad that Jesus doesn't just come in to hang out, but he goes right to where the need is, amen? He walked right up to Thomas and said, hey boys, what's up? Thomas, hey, here's the nail prints. Here's the side split open. Put your hand here, put your fingers there. And Jesus said, <laughs> and Thomas said, I'm not worthy. Lord, I believe, I believe. But don't you love that Jesus didn't stop at just that moment? But then he looked on down to you and I on January, right in the, the year of 2022. And he says, Thomas, you believe because you see, but blessed are those who have not seen. Ah, come on, somebody. Who, who haven't seen, that didn't see the scars in my hands, didn't see me on a cross didn't see my side split open. Didn't have this, me standing in front of them. But blessed are those who have not seen, but yet they believe. And I gotta believe there's some folks in this house today that you've not seen it, but you know one day soon, soon and coming soon, you will see Jesus. You know that heaven is your home. This is just your stopover. But until you're there, you're gonna be faithful because God tells us, Jesus said, there's trouble, be brave. There's tribulation, don't freak out. Jesus has already overcome the world. He said, I have destroyed the power of the enemy. <sighs> He's destroyed the power of the enemy. The future is bright. Oh, who believes that today? The future's bright. Let me give you just one other point. I had four, but I'm going to give you two. What does that mean? I'm teasing you for next week to give you two more of these points next week. Amen. Second point. Jesus isn't looking at your past. He's looking at your future. I want you to know right now, we come in here maybe worried and concerned about our past and trying to figure out our future, but Jesus is not concerned about your past. He paid and took care of all of that on the cross. He's now invested and focused in your future. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says this. It says, if anyone, if anyone, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if anyone is in Christ, come on, can you help me say it? There, what a new creation. If you're in Jesus today, look over to somebody that's got their, that, if you're in Jesus, come on, raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. If you're in Jesus, he's in you, you're in him. Raise your hand and look over at somebody and say, you are the new and improved, baby. Tell somebody you are a new creation. Tell somebody you look better this year than you did last year. Amen. Why do I know that? Because therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a, come on, help me somebody, a new creation. 
Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Jesus isn't looking at your past. He's looking at your future. God has forgiven your past sins. Jesus has secured your eternal future. Jesus came to not just save sinners off the street, but also to change hypocrites in the church seats. What I'm trying to say today is he is not done doing his work. He's going to continue to save folks and sinners on the streets and also change some of us that fall into a hypocritical mindset because God so loved the world that he sent his son. Jesus so loved God that he said, not my will, but thy will be done. And I love what the word of God says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Here's the way Jesus looks at you, not looking at your past, but your future. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, everybody say joy. Come on, say joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Come on, somebody. The J-O-Y, the joy the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Jesus said, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, that wasn't just finishing God's plan, but you and I were the joy set before him. Our future, our life being changed, us living our life for the glory of our God, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured. What am I talking about? I'm saying, you know what? The world is topsy-turvy. Be brave. Jesus has overcome the world. You can quit today or you can endure. I challenge you, do not quit. When you're your weakest, the word says, in my weakness, God's his strongest even when you and I feel like somehow we're not going to be able to make it into tomorrow, God's going to walk you and me by faith into our next season. I'm going to say it because it's going to anger the devil and remind you who your God is. The future is bright in Jesus' name. It's not over yet. Let me put that last point. Put that last point up on the screen. I want folks to see this. Not the, no, the last point, the very last, that's right. Can you read this with me, church? Today isn't the end of the story. The devil's trying to convince somebody today, today or this season or this year, it's the end of the story. The devil is a liar today. It is not the end of the story. It's just the beginning of something new and amazing that God is going to accomplish in your life. The future is bright. It doesn't keep you from dens of lions. It doesn't somehow keep you from fiery furnaces. But all I know is when you fall into the fire, you find the fourth man in the fire. When you fall into the hell of your situation, you come out on fire for the glory of the Lord. You might be put into a den because of your righteous living, but watch as God will cause the lion that should have consumed you to be a very pillow you relax your head on because you've learned how to lean on God and not your own understanding and in all of your ways, even your awful days, if you trust him, he will direct your path for his glory. Amen. Oh, God is good. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody praise him. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, does anybody hear the Holy Spirit speaking today? The future is bright. Tell somebody. Come on, tell them. The future is bright. The future is bright. Father, your future is bright today. Hebrews 12 and 2, Christ, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. And he is set down at the right hand side, or set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I tell you, in light of that fact today, that his job is completed, it is finished, all that we need, we have. Jesus didn't leave us without power. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And just so you know it, I'm going to double down. I'm sending the Holy Spirit now to be with you and to live in you and to lead you and guide you. And the fact of that, we should want to grow spiritually. We should apprehend and go after this season of prayer and fasting. To feel the nudge of the Holy Spirit. To feel him directing us that today isn't the end of the story. Today's just the beginning of the new chapter that God is writing. You know, friends of mom and dad and, and I and Gwenny just yesterday had a homegoing celebration in Conway, South Carolina. Love this family. One of the four boys, four boys, five boys, five boys, five boys. Uh, the Star family, Marlene and and, and the dad's name, they called him Babe. That was like his nickname, Babe Star and Marlene Star and the five star boys, Daryl, David, Dwayne, Dominic, and Denny. David and Dwayne were 
twins. Daryl was the oldest. And then Dominic and Denny were mine and David's age. We kind of hung out with them. Well, there's no doubt there were times when the star boys were just straight up trouble. How I many of you can't get that many boys together and brothers together and then I'd be some stuff broken, some stuff taken, <laughs> some, some grounding, some, I remember back in the day when parents used to spank some, high, there was some heinies spanked as well. I mean, it just was, I mean, it, you can't have five boys and not know there's going to be a little bit of trouble. Come on, can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. I mean, that's just the way that it is. But man, they were fun and exciting. But you know what kept keep that family knit together was not only a father that loved the Lord, was called into ministry, but a mom that had dynamic faith. Marlene was a great faith, woman of faith. Um, her name, maiden name was Defino, Marlene Defino. She was this little, thin, wiry Italian mom that still today, one of my favorite dishes, even as a little kid to now, is, is spaghetti and oil that she would make. And it just it was, didn't have a lot of gravy or, or a whole lot of sauce on it. It just was very basic. But man, she just knew how to make it right. Just one of wonderful little Italian mothers. But boy, she was powerful and a great friend to many, to my parents. Well, a stroke hit her a couple of days ago and it had its effect. And today she's in glory. But all I can tell you is, is that family, no matter how and what's going on in their life, that when times got tough, babe passed away close to 20 years ago, they now are able to say this, because I know it in their heart, no matter what they're shaking with today, they know that the story's not over. It didn't end when Marlene passed away. It just was the baton being passed to them to keep living that faith. And as I spoke to Dominic and I spoke to Denny, I heard them saying what this, you know, it's so awesome that she is with her Lord and that she is with her husband, our father, and we have a peace that is surpassing all understanding. Can I tell you today, you know what? There might be some loss of 2021. There might be some in 2022. But those that believe and know their God have a certainty that the future is bright. If we're going to be those that remain and we're caught up, we'll praise God. But if we are those that die and go, we'll see him again because we're going to see him next because heaven is our home. Amen. I guess I'm just trying to say before we ever stand here a year from now and say, God's been faithful. Let's believe him for the new year. Let me just tell you, whatever this year holds, God is good. The future is bright. Come on, who believes that today? Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We pray that you've been blessed by both the word as well as the worship. There's some information on the bottom of your screen. If for some reason you would love to get in contact with us and share with us about what God's done in your life today, we would love to hear from you. Until this time next week, make sure that you're following us on all of our social media platforms, as well as looking for us in our midweek meetup right in the middle of the week. Until this same time, in this same place next week, we know and we just speak it over you, church, the future is bright for 2022.